So I had the privilege to chair the, a session on endocrine therapy resistance and biomarkers that could actually help to select which patient benefits or does not from a CDK4-6 inhibitor. So the, the main message that's emerging from this field is that there are a lot of unique biomarkers, but really they don't account for the majority of the, the resistant mechanisms. It's more like that each patient is developing a resistance on its own, so it's very hard to actually identify a single mechanism that would guide treatment. On the other hand, some composite markers were presented during the meeting that are promising and interesting. It looks like that different ER-positive disease subtypes might actually benefit differently from different endocrine intensification strategies. So the Pfizer group actually presented some results that suggested that there may be a subgroup within the Paloma and the Penelope B studies, which were large adjuvant trials and unfortunately failed to show benefit from, from uh, pulpocyclib. But within that <clears throat> population, there seemed to be a group, which is the luminal A, or relatively sort of indolent disease subtype, that appeared to be driving benefit from pulpocyclib. And this was done in a split sort of um, <clears throat> Um, sample size analysis where the discovery was made on Penelope B and it was validated on the um, <clears throat> PALAS trial. So the group that seemed to drive benefit was the luminal A, uh, progesterone receptor negative, uh, with a relatively high HER2 mRNA expression, but still HER2 negative. So that's a very sort of um, interesting novel subset, if you wish that appears to be the more indolent luminal A subtype that surprisingly seem to have derived the benefit from, from uh, <clears throat> pulpocyclin. Of course, this would require some additional validation to really translate into the clinic.